Bob. You all know this gentleman, been here frequently and star of his own show, entitled, strangely enough, The McLean Stevenson Show, which is on NBC on Wednesday nights at 9.30. Would you welcome McLean Stevenson. <laughs> I'm really glad to see I you. I have not seen you for a long time. I know. You know what I'd like to do sometime? It's silly, I know. Well. I wish you'd have a party at your house and let me come over and substitute host it. <laughs> right at the house? Yeah. For the entire evening or just yeah. the party? No, just for the party. <laughs> no, for the entire evening. Uh -huh. I have, you've been busy on your own show. I guess that's why you, uh, I haven't seen you. Although you work I, in the well, building that's here. that's true. I don't know that anybody has seen the show, but we've certainly been here. It's embarrassing to go places and have people say, what are you doing, McLean? <laughs> Gee, we haven't seen much of you since well, you Well, now, it takes Mesh. a little time to build, uh, build yeah, an does. audience. You know, how long have you been on now? I uh, don't say two years. Not no, 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 one of those no, answers. no. No, no. Uh, we've uh, been on uh, seven times. We started December 1st. It's been two and a half months. We've been on seven times. We were in lieu of preemptions. Well, you see, that is... Uh, Originally, they had a show scheduled preemptions that went in that they did cancel and put us back on. No, that we're is doing tough that. when you start a new show and you try to get a habit build up and all of a sudden they put yeah. in, you know, a documentary on the Phillips screwdriver or something. <laughs> I know. And it, because that's important and it, sh and it should be seen. <laughs> or bowling for towels or something like that and it uh, upsets your own show. Uh, Are you happy with the show? You mean the way it is content-wise? No, but, uh, <laughs> if we're going to stay where we are. But, uh, no, I, we will be changing the format of the show if we're picked up. And in addition to the 371, <laughs> which is the main reason I'm here. Hi, George. How are you doing, my friend? Love the earring. Okay. I could no more do that. Did that hurt? No. Uh, my brother and I split a pair about eight years ago. <laughs> <laughs> My um, wife finally had that done about a couple of weeks ago. Oh, you know, I, and she she was all upset about it. She thought it was going to be terrible, and it's it's quick. And then you put in a training earring. <laughs> well, you do. You wear a you wear, don't you wear a training yeah, earring for a while? Stud, put a little stock in there, a stud yeah. or something. Yeah. No, I, uh, <laughs> I just uh, maybe a stick on or something. For, uh, <laughs> big a decal, night, but, maybe. Right. <laughs> we were talking about the show, which is silly, but I, we're going to change the format if we get picked up. Tomorrow night's the big night. Awesome. This, I'm begging people to watch. Um, <laughs> if we get, I think it's uh, 26 or 27, whatever that means. A share? Yeah. Uh -huh. um, you are in the ballpark. We got a good uh, shot. See, uh, the show about the bear, the man that lives with the bear. Right. Grizzly uh, bear. Grizzly Adams. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Grizzly Adams. That's a good show. Uh, I, th I thought it was going to be dumb. I love it. And I then the one right. after us is even, it's very, you know, spooky stuff. So what you're here for is tonight is for a mercy booking. <laughs> Just a mercy booking. And to humiliate yourself and all of America by... Let's, let's, come on, let's... You know I know each other. Well, okay, let's, sure. let's beg. All right. This, this is this man's life we're talking it is. about. We are serious, folks. And we want to see you out in Reseda, you know, working for Allstate. <laughs> you know, I mean, this is it, folks. Tomorrow night, it needs a 27 Whoa. to stay in this business. <laughs> we get a 2-7, we're in. And so tomorrow night, what, what is the time? 9.30? Uh, it, yeah, 9.30. On NBC. Yeah. Okay, so much for that. Right, okay. Did you see the lady we had up before? Mrs. Wasn't uh, she something? Yeah, uh, 58 years old. The road up, that ready Ruder. Yeah, the homecoming queen. <laughs> Miss Ruder? Rita Ruder. Rita Ruder. Rita Ruder. Where'd you go to school? Uh, I went to, North, well, I've gone to a number of them. I went to Northwestern. Well, that's a good best high class too. Lousy football, but good mononucleosis and bad weather. <laughs> I was. Ever, did you ever date the homecoming queen at Northwestern? That's uh, what all the guys want to do. want to go with the cheerleaders. Yeah. I, don't know why. I was more into the pep rally girls and the thetas, yeah. but the uh, <laughs> homecoming queen our first year was Paul Lind. <laughs> uh, which was a little awkward, That's but right. uh, no, we had. Uh, I never. I never have. I did, this is, this is not terribly interesting, but it certainly fills the time. <laughs> well, we have a lot of that to fill. I understand. Uh, I had a date with a Rose Bowl queen, which is kind of, here. yeah, well, from here, that was three years top, ago. That's top girl. But that year, four years ago, if you remember, was one of the worst Rose Bowl days. It rained, and it was about 40 degrees above zero. 
at the time she got on her float. And she rode down Colorado Boulevard five hours in a little outfit with a lot of goose pimples and a lot of this. <laughs> that smile left her face two and a half years later in, in mid-August. So it was not the best of dates. The uh... IQ of a houseplant. Unbelievable. <laughs> oh, no, no. You don't have to be a smart person to be well, a Well, now, you shouldn't say that because people can fi very easily figure out who the homecoming queen was that year. <laughs> well, no. Well, all right, then fine. I don't give a darn. Are you so we lose two the, more viewers. Are you saying the girl? <laughs> I mean, you shouldn't insult anybody tonight. No, uh, Believe I'm me. really sorry I, about anybody that. Anybody who owns the set, you better... Uh, <laughs> You apologize, that girl. I'm she could sorry. make the difference between you being with Allstate no, she was and, <laughs> and doing your show. Now you tell her you're sorry. I'm sorry. Tell her to watch tomorrow. I'm sorry. Watch tomorrow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I laughed at you. I. Um, George's a funny man. I laughed at you, buddy. No. I. You know something? I, honest to God, I was saying this to somebody. I've lost my sense of humor. As soon as when I stopped drinking. Oh, I don't think that's no, true. No, I read that article in Reader's Digest where your brains flake. If you keep drinking, they, they just sort of flake off and drop into your shoes or something. Oh, I don't yeah. know where it goes off. The little well, you're brain talking cells. about you lose so many cells. Brain cells, yeah. No. So I decided, well, I'll, I was at that time uh, in the sauce pretty good with Uncle Harvey, <laughs> Harvey uh, Corman yes. and all. Uh, so I decided I'd just keep it up until I couldn't say Humpty Dumpty anymore. <laughs> did you, did you put, put a halt to it? But, yeah, I stopped it. Mm -hmm. And it's affected my uh, I don't think it thinking. changed your sense of humor, though. Huh? I don't think it changes your sense of humor. I don't know. I you may your think shoes. you may think you're less. I think funny. there are some funny things down Do in some my Don shoes. Adams and listen to what's down there. I laughed at your thing about the supermarket. I uh, the one thing I don't you know the sh every basket in a supermarket has always has one little piece of dried up lettuce in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And I wonder what the hell do they do with that? And you know those, the kids that come in and, and the, the basket kids that are out in the parking lot that jam those suckers together? <laughs> they shred that stuff and sell it for cold stuff. <laughs> That's good, man. Did you see 60 Minutes a few weeks ago where they did a story on the man who invented that item? The telescoping basket? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, before in supermarkets, if you remember, women had a little, like a wicker basket. It was just a little straw basket you'd put over your arm. And this gentleman came up with the idea of a shopping cart on wheels that telescoped into each other and completely revolutionized the entire supermarket, supermarket business <laughs> all over the It's pockets. not as documentary humor as what I was doing there, right? Oh, but I think that's interesting. I, you know, between this and Hollywood Squares, you can learn a lot. <laughs> You can learn a lot watching yeah. that show. I shouldn't be Did sassy you do, are you to doing that show? I do a lot of those. I love doing that. Yeah. Anytime you can make good money sitting down, man, take that kind of work. <laughs> well, you don't even... Well, you got to wear nice pants on Hollywood Squares. They never see your bottom parts. You that's right. I have to stand shorts. out here and do things. I know you do. Right. How come I didn't see you playing in the uh, Bob Hope? Uh, I know you're a golfer. I didn't see you in that uh, tournament. I... Well, for the Bob Hope and the Bing Crosby, I wasn't invited. Oh, I'm sorry. I... I don't know why. I'm a good golfer and a semi-name. Uh, I don't think I have enough blazers to play in Hope's tournament. There's a cocktail party every 12 minutes. You need I've somewhere. only got three blazers and two pairs of white shoes. Crosby, I got the sweaters. I didn't mean to make you feel badly. I, no, it doesn't make me did. feel badly. I you just... would have been invited because you, you do play a lot of golf. No, I, well, I, well, I played... Uh, I went to a one Sunday, which was a biggie, uh, the George Culver um, fifth annual open in Bakersfield. I <laughs> said... A lot of uh, my partner, Ron Piranowski, former baseball great, introduced himself to me on the tee and said, should be a good day, McLean. Now, this is a man who is about half in the bag, and it's now 7.30. <laughs> he said, I'm Ron Piranowski, and I, I was in awe. I went up there with Harvey Corman. Oh, well, I... Well, he's a treat to try. Oh, boy, a long drive in a snowstorm. They have snow when you get up there's from here to Bakersfield. Um, <laughs> gee, whiz, God, please watch. Certainly There's nothing sounds like an interesting, interesting trip. Do you do this, is, you do this no. material tomorrow, do you, on the show? No, no. no. <laughs> I, uh, what I'm saying is, in the valley here. Yes. In San Fernando Valley. Yes. Yeah. It's like 80 degrees. Good. And you go yes, for yes. maybe 70 miles, and they got two feet of snow. Mm -hmm. And then you get down the hill, and there's... 500 Mexican people picking cabbage. It's unbelievable. <laughs> and a lot of grasshoppers, a lot of oil up there. Fongi chingi, fongi chingi, right out in the golf course. Anyway, I'm up there with Harvey in his black and white rubber shoes and his peg pants. 
and we are playing with Ron Paranoski and a guy named Jesse. Now, Ron Paranoski introduced himself, and uh, we, to give you some idea how well the team did, it's not a big tournament. They mm. gave us a towel and an ice bucket, <laughs> and that was the winning team. Uh, Ron Paranoski is Polish. He was born on April Fool's Day, and he's left-handed. And that's the truth. He's pitching coach for the Dodgers. Yeah. Uh, Harvey just does the best he can. Very few, uh, very few great Jewish athletes. I mean, if, uh, uh, I've probably lost another 2,200 Jews. <laughs> but you don't... Well, let's see. Uh, Polish and the no. Jews. Let's see. Uh, what white seeing... Anglo-Saxon America is going to have to bail you out tomorrow night. And I... <laughs> No, but I mean, you've got your Sandy Koufax and Marv Rotblatt in baseball. You've got Marty Fleck and a couple of other guys in golf. You had Sid Luckman and, and a couple of guys. But there are not a lot of Jewish high jumpers. No. Hockey. No, I've named one Jewish hockey player. Yeah. See? Right. You can't. No. But uh, Sandy Koufax and Cal Abrams were two Dodgers. I know. Well, sure. Okay. But they're not an athletic-oriented group. What is this? Where's this leading? <laughs> Absolutely no idea. <laughs> I lost your train of thought back with, I was the, with the oil that wells Culver going. Culver and uh, my partner, uh, Ron and Harvey, and a guy named Jesse, who never did give his last name, <laughs> drank two fifths of brandy. He introduced himself, said, Hi, Jesse's the name, Mud's the game. <laughs> Sells mud. A mud salesman. Never met one of those either. Probably lost a lot of folks that dig mud, too. Oh, okay. I don't know. <laughs> Well, the dirt farmers are gone. A lot of dirt farmers. I've <laughs> lost everybody. I don't need it. You Forget certainly it. punched it up in the mind. You like all well, What the hell? They can watch the... Uh... You like the insurance business. Look, you can set your own hours. You make as many calls as you want to. Sure. And you Show can business say, is not for you everybody. Say, you know what you say? You end up saying stuff. Well, I never met a widow that said she had too much insurance. Huh, huh, huh. I can't do that. I guess you can. You'd be can. good at I'll Oh, you'd be, be good at that. At her birthday parties in the valley. We have uh, Martina Navratilova with us tonight. I didn't know that. Yes. <laughs> uh, fine. It's probably the second ranked uh, women's tennis player in the world right now. Oh, Russian lady. No, yeah. Czechoslovakian. Close. Yeah. <laughs> you also lost the Czechs and the Russians. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> 